Hello, my name is Brian L. Jackson. I'm a Tulsa attorney here with um, Dads.Law, where fathers are not disposable. And I'm here on location in, uh, beside the Arkansas River in front of the, PS, the uh, PSO power plant. I'm here with my uh, daughter and my dog. And I, they're here just to remind us of why, uh, just to remind everybody of why we're here, what matters, family. Um, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about some interesting developments recently locally. Um, a recent edict came down from the Claremore schools, basically taking the position that they can search child's possession, um, personal possessions and um, the child's person anytime they want for any reason at all or no reason at all if the child happens to be on school grounds. Um, this does raise an interesting question. What are your child's rights when it comes to search and seizure laws? Um, and the answer is, as a matter of federal constitutional law, the child does have some protection under the Fourth Amendment from searches and from the evidence of searches being used in criminal procedures against them. However, the rules in school are a little bit different than like, for example, if you get stopped by the side of the highway. The school can search a child according to federal constitutional law um, if they have a reasonable suspicion that the child is in possession of some kind of an item that um, would be disruptive, would create a safety hazard, um, you know, or otherwise disrupt the security or the, or the order of the school, which is reasonable suspicion is actually a lower standard even than probable cause. Um, now, that's for disciplinary purposes, because of course, if the search is specifically for law enforcement purposes, like for example, if a child were suspected of having like illegal drugs, that's still probable cause. And that same standards apply there Although if it's suspected to be on their person, you would still come under one of the warrant exceptions under under uh, Fourth Amendment, existing Fourth Amendment jurisprudence, where they don't need to get a warrant, but they do need to have probable cause if they want to search your child's body. The other thing to be aware of too is that the the nature the search has to be reasonable. So depending on what exactly the school suspects, is going to control what type of a search is allowed. For example, if a child is suspected, let's say, of possessing cigarettes it is not generally going to be considered reasonable for the school to conduct a full-on strip search or a cavity search to look for cigarettes. On the other hand, if the child was suspected of, say, having a firearm, such a search might be deemed reasonable because the firearm presents a far greater security hazard. Um, so, I mean, the two issues to be aware of are it's a lower standard for when the search occurs for disciplinary purposes. It's, not, it's this usual probable cause when the search occurs for strictly law enforcement purposes. And search has to be reasonable. They can't strip. They can't strip search your kid. For example, like I said, if they were suspected of having cigarettes. Um, it has to be reasonable. Uh, th there, there was actually an interesting case that I will talk about in a future video. Um, this was out of the Northeast and it involved the search of a cellular device. And in the, my next video, we're going to talk about that case because I think that creates a special problem in modern times because of how much of our lives we have on our phones. Um, if you have, if you, your child's being been searched at school or there's any issue with the school, you need a, you need a good lawyer. And one place you can find a good lawyer is dads.law where fathers are not disposable. Thanks guys.